Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to Garb August, the BookTube event your mother warned you about, the one you, whose name you saw scrawled on the graffiti of the bathroom at the truck stop on the highway. <laughs> this, is, this is an event that was created by Ollie at Criminali, and it is designed to celebrate the reading of trash, of garbage. <laughs> for, for this month of the year, we are not avoiding trash. I don't think Ollie goes out of his way to avoid trash at any time, but some other people do. Trash has its illicit fun. It, it has its allures. It's a bad experience if you encounter a bad piece of trash. And some of you who aren't familiar with reading trash might think that's a silly, weird thing to say. Of course, all trash is bad. But no, there is a way to do trash well, I think. It's a diagnostic video that I haven't made yet. I'm running out of days to do it for Garb August. But uh, if trash is done well, if it's good trash, then it's a lot of fun and can be a perfect palate cleanser. Uh, and a hallmark of of Garb August, Some, the kind of thing, I mean, the main hallmark of garbage literature, trash literature, to most readers would be any kind of romance novel. If you ask a normal snobby reader, what's trash? You wouldn't want to read trash, would you? They're immediately going to think of romance novels. Maybe even with Fabio on the cover, even though that happened 35 years ago. Talk about cultural staying power. But if you get a, a, a little more experienced a reader, then they might come up with reflexive notions of trash. They'll still mention romance novels, unfortunately. They might mention other things, too. Like, for instance, does the book go on forever and ever? Does it have uh, dozens or even hundreds of entries in its, in, its, in its history? That probably means that each of those entries is garbage. Also, men's fiction, action, adventure fiction, is typically viewed as garbage. And I'm not saying that that's, not, that that's unjust. I can't think of many examples of that kind of fiction that's any good. Not good in the sense of not still being trash, you, if you see what I mean. And maybe you don't, because we have, we have had very few, far fewer than I would like, diagnostic videos about what trash actually is and what it isn't. Uh, and if we're talking about men's adventure stories, surely the Executioner novels are right at the top of the list for offenders or potential offenders. Don Pendleton's Mac Bolan adventures. Uh, which have come up a few times on Garb August, and have come up a few times on Ollie's channel without being in Garb August. This is a story centering around a character named Mac Bolan, an army veteran uh, whose family is wiped out by the mob. And Mac Bolan vows a one-man war of vengeance against the mob. Not just against the people who killed his family, the specific individual people who killed his family, and not just even against the specific mafia group that employed the people that killed his family, but against the Mafia just in general. Everywhere. <laughs> he's he's becomes a one-man vengeance machine. Uh, and in a, in a point that's, uh, that's sometimes overlooked by Mac Bowl and aficionados, in order to do that, he has to go AWOL. So he's wanted by the, by the army. He is, he is a bad soldier. He's a disloyal American. He has deserted uh, his troop mates. He's deserted his platoon. In order to carry on this this war, he's also naturally wanted by the police. Although several Mac Bolan novels make a point of telling you that maybe it's possible that some police departments in some parts of the world are kind of quietly cheering him on. They like the fact that he's killing all the bad guys. Uh, they shouldn't like that. <laughs> he's killing them based on his own measure of whether they're guilty or not, and he's killing them without virtue of a trial or jury legal charges of any kind. He's killing them extrajudiciously without the police, without the courts. And if you can do that to them, he can do that to you. What if he thinks that what you're doing is wrong? He's a villain, in other words. He's a bad guy. We had this discussion when I had my uh, my ranting chalk about uh, Marvel Comics' character, The Punisher, who's completely based on Mac Bull and the Executioner. We had this talk then. What we're talking about here is a thug. It doesn't matter that, that some of the people that he kills might have themselves killed people. It doesn't matter. But the last thing Mac Bolan was ever going to do was take the grief of his slaughtered family and channel it into going to law school. <laughs> Instead, he just gets guns and an endless supply of ammunition. Again, I want to ask how he does that. He doesn't wear a mask. He does have facial surgery. But as we're told in many novels, the reconstructed face quickly becomes as famous as his original face. So it's not like it's a disguise of any kind. He has to buy guns. He has to have medical treatment. He's badly wounded, fatally wounded, but it doesn't matter because he's a he-man action hero, uh, in every novel. He, isn't, he needs an endless supply of ammunition in every novel. Where does he get that? 
Was he go to an arm store? His face will be plastered right behind the counter. <laughs> We're not supposed to worry about that. We're not supposed to think how he books airline flights. We're not supposed to think how he goes to restaurants or makes takeout orders or gets food or water of any kind. We're not supposed to ask that. He is one man instrument of vengeance. Uh, and if he's that bad to the mafia, just because they killed his family, <laughs> I shouldn't say just because apparently he loved them, uh, imagine how much worse that would be if the Mafia threatened a blood relative of his, because those weren't the only blood relatives he has. He has a brother. He has a younger, a younger brother, younger brother Johnny, who is badly wounded in that attack, but not killed. And uh, Mac Bolan was an ideal, gruff, but idolizable older brother. He was big and tough. He was caring and considerate. They've got camping together. Maybe he showed young Johnny how to eviscerate someone with using just his thumb. <laughs> Bonding moments like that. And uh, in one adventure of The Executioner, it's number 12 in the series, someone abducts Johnny Bolin and Johnny Bolin's girlfriend. <laughs> For good measure. They, someone abducts the two of them in Boston. And Mac Bolin goes insane. He was insane to begin with in his one-man war against the Mafia. But now that this time, it's personal. <laughs> now he's extra insane. He takes a plane to Boston. Why the ticket agent doesn't say, hey, aren't you Mac Bolin? Why, why, off, why field marshals at the airport don't shoot him dead? Law enforcement, we're told, has a standing order that you are to shoot him dead on sight. There is to be no attempt to apprehend him. He's too dangerous. And the Mafia also wants him dead. He still manages to be alive for 12 books, and 12 is just the infancy of this series. But the book number 12 in the series is when this happens. It is called Boston Blitz. Those two tied-up young people on the cover are Johnny Bolin and his girlfriend. And there is Mac Bolin, one artist's rendition of Mac Bolin. And there in the background is a map of Boston. Mac Bolin comes to Boston to rattle the cages of the Boston Mafia in order to determine who has abducted his brother and his girlfriend, find out whether or not they're alive, and get them back or exact vengeance. Now, we are told in this novel that the Boston Mafia is in disarray. Uh, the, their main leader uh, was taken out just a little while ago, and now various capos and dons are fighting for control of the territory. Uh, and so there's no one central figure. A whole bunch of figures, one of which it seems pretty clear to me to be based on one of the Bulger brothers. Uh, Books Figatoni, I think his name is, or Figaroni. Uh, Books Figaroni is a vicious mob boss, but he's also eloquent, dresses well, and went to Harvard. He has, he's a lawyer. He's, he's a bookish person, hence his nickname. He's not just a thug. He's surrounded by thugs, but he himself is a cultured individual and really should warrant a novel on his own. He's a hell of a lot more interesting than Mac Bolan is. But Mac Bolan gets to Boston and immediately starts investigating. Now, he has a little help here. One of his foremost allies is a guy who is a police officer who is under deep undercover in the Boston mob. So, as Mac Bolan puts it in this book, he has triple loyalties. He's loyal to the police, the mob, and Mac Bolan. And he fills in, at the beginning of this book, he fills in Mac Bolan on uh, the situation, what's going on, what the Boston mob is like, you know, what he can expect. It doesn't seem to be information that Mac Bolan needs. He seems to be able to know where to find these mobsters. He just walks into their strongholds and shoots them dead. He's shooting some of the small fry, and he's leaving the terrified witnesses with uh, his message. Tell them I'm here. Somebody in town knows why. <laughs> he's not going to tell anybody else why. He's not going to spread that word. But he wants people to start letting the upper echelons of these warring dons know that the executioner is in town and that he's engaged in what the Boston media quickly refers to as his Boston Blitz. <laughs> because everybody knows that Mac Bolin is around. The people in Boston know he's in town. The media knows he's in town and what he's doing. The cops, the city officials know that he's in town. They don't seem to be able to find him. But they know where, that he's here and that he's killing the Boston mob. Uh, but there's a wrinkle in what Mac Bolin's informant tells him, which is that, yes, Mac Bolin's brother Johnny and his girlfriend were abducted. Uh, but the people, the two low-level, leg-breaking thugs that abducted them were then found murdered. 
and with the ammunition that Mac Bolan is himself known to use, and with a calling card that he is known to leave behind in his, with the various people that he murders for whatever reasons that he feels like murdering them on a Monday or a given Wednesday. But that, that happened before Mac Bolan got to Boston. So someone is trying to make it look like Mac Bolan has already killed the abductors of his, of his brother and his brother's girlfriend. When Bolan knows that's not true, and so does his informant. And on top of that, no one in the Boston crime world has come forward to say that they have the executioner's brother, dead or alive. No one's claiming it. No one's trying to use it to control Mac Bolan, which is a very interesting way for a men's adventure novel to start. Now, I want to say, when it comes to executioner novels just in general, I've read four of them for Garb August, and... Garb August has opened my eyes to something that Ollie knew in his infinite wisdom, and in, in defense, I want to say, this is incredibly readable stuff. When I read an, uh, a novel like this, I understand the appeal that Garbage has for its devotees, of the greatest devotee of all being Ollie, a criminologist. I understand the appeal that it has when it's done well. I'm not 100% sure that uh, Don Pendleton, or I don't know that Don Pendleton wrote this book. I know that there were other people who wrote executioner novels. I don't know if he did or not, but I'm not sure that whoever wrote this book was, as we've said before, in on the joke. This seems to be written in deadly earnest, and with a fair degree of erudition. Shakespeare is echoed many times in here, without anyone actually saying that it's Shakespeare. You, so you're reading along. You won't know why this, this phrase is so funny, so odd-looking. Unless you know your Shakespeare. The writer of this book obviously did. The writer of this book knew the, the classical world, the campaigns of Alexander the Great, the stories that come from Herodotus and nowhere else. It's the only place you would find them. Stories that come from Xenophon. I think I even caught a, 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 an allusion to a Samuel Johnson quote in here. So it was an erudite person who wrote this thing, but they wrote it very much in terms of action-adventure, where Mac Bolan is this towering figure. Everyone's in awe of him. He's got a man with an ice-cold killer's face. And he, he seems to be able to get places that he wouldn't be able to get. There's an element of the shadow involved in what he's doing. And an element also of Doc Savage, in that he, despite the fact that he's constantly telling people in this book that, you know, he's just a mortal man, he could end up being a mafia turkey don't ask what a turkey is when it comes to the mafia. It's a horrible fate, let's just put it that way. And he's constantly reminding people that he could become a turkey himself. But he's not superhuman. But if you read enough Mac Bolan novels, you realize that he is superhuman. He's basically unkillable. He might be called a normal man, but he'll, he's going to live through things that no one can live through. He's going to be able to do things that no one else can do. And be, because of that setup, I'm not 100% sure if the author of this book is in on the joke. But Boy, oh boy, will you not care. <laughs> it is so intensely done that you're, you're hooked right away. There's no filler anywhere in this book. Nothing at all. Barely even any atmosphere setting to let you know that it's happening in Boston as opposed to Miami or Cuba. There's barely any of that. Just enough. Mention of North Station, mention of the, of the Patriots, just barely enough to make you know that that is the location of this book. But instead it gets right down to business, right down to the heart of things. There's gruesome action on page two. And it just keeps going after that. Uh, as you wonder what's going on, the, the, the smart act, uh, act that whoever wrote this book, I'm assuming that it's Don Pendleton, the, the smart thing, the choice that's made right away at the beginning of this book, is to throw in that extra mystery. It's not just a normal executioner novel where he sets up, you know, his digs in a, in a transient hotel in City X and immediately starts killing all the mobsters in City X. There's more to it than that. Not just the personal element, which is not common for a Mac Bolan novel, uh, but also uh, the mystery. There's someone playing both sides here. Someone is trying to set Mac Bolan against the mob and the mob against Mac Bolan. Who is that person? Is it someone we've been introduced to fairly early on in the book? Can we figure out their motives? Will there be a tension involved in seeing how long it takes Mac Bolan to figure out who that person is? In addition to the standing tension of the book, which is the fate of his younger brother and the girlfriend. Are they alive? Are they dead? Are they anywhere near Boston? In other words, the point I'm trying to make about today's Garb August trash pile is that this was terrific fun. Just terrific fun. I hugely enjoyed reading it. This is prime trash reading. 
just prime. <laughs> I would like to think that even people who never read trash, if they picked up Boston Blitz and just started reading it, let's say they resigned themselves to the fact that I'm going to read, let's say, regardless of what I think about trash, I'm going to hold my nose and read 50 pages. I'd like to think that any of those people at page 50 would read page 51, even freed from their obligation. They would still keep going. I certainly did. Uh, and I, you know, you'd think that I'd have higher standards for a novel that's allegedly set in Boston. No, I loved it. <laughs> Absolutely loved it. I was, I was hooked right from the beginning. I think you would be too. Uh, so I'm, we're finishing out Garb August here. Garb August only has a few more days left. I wanted to get in another Executioner novel, so that's it. It's Boston Blitz, the one Executioner novel that I, that I would be inexcusable for me not to read. And we'll see what tomorrow's trash is. I, I'm going to steer clear, I think, of the Omegaverse for the rest of, of Garb August. That was just too disturbing. But maybe another men's adventure novel. That might be fun. I will spin the wheel tonight, and you will find out next time. <laughs> Thank you, Booktube.